Um, <clears throat> the other thing, the other thing is, um, let me get back there. Uh, the other thing is um, internet service providers. Um, let me know who are the internet service providers and also most of the internet service providers also provide us with um, hosting solutions. So let me know who, who are the internet service providers that you know that exists in our Kenyan market. You can type in um, who are the internet service providers that you know, but also who are the hosting providers that you know that exist in our market here in Kenya. They provide hosting. Remember, what we mean by hosting is, uh, you know, someone with web servers where they provide you with a space to be able to um, keep web files. Um, and those files can be accessed anytime that someone requires to access those files. Uh, because the, the computer that is hosting those files are actual, is a computer that is actually connected to the internet. Um, so, what are your thoughts? Which are um, uh, the web, uh, I mean, the internet service providers or even the hosting providers that you know, Liquid Telecom, um, that could be one of them. Um, because some of those that are going to be very key, Safaricom is one of them, correct? Um, some of them are going to be very key to us, even as we look at our hosting solutions. Um, Zuku, yes. Um, I don't know if Zuku provides a hosting solution. I am not sure. Um, but uh, even as we continue, some of uh, those that are maybe I will interest us in. Um, Um, let me type some of them that probably I have worked with them in one way or the other. So we have ESC directory. We have Truehost. Truehost is a new one, but it's it's picking up very well. We have Sasa hosts. These are providers of um, providers of hosting solutions. Okay, providers of hosting solution. Kenya Web Experts. Um, these are all Kenyan, of course. Um, um, which other one? Of course, Safaricom, like one of us said. Uh, Safaricom. Sorry, Safaricom. It should be Safaricom. Um, I don't know if there is any other. Um, it, of course, there are many in the market right now, so I can't be able to exhaust all of them. Um, so um, yeah, so so basically, um, those are just hosting providers, and they are very key because in, unless you have your own infrastructure then whenever you develop web applications, you may want to ensure that you collaborate with some of those. Uh, other than those ones, um, there are cloud solutions that, and, and we'll look at some of those examples in details and even uh, look at the backend and see what they are providing, what exactly they are providing. Uh, but other than um, the ones I've, I've, I've talked about, I have seen what Digital Ocean is providing which is quite um, a good package. They have pay-as-you-go packages, um, you know, very good packages, especially for um, cloud solutions, for cloud solutions. Of course, um, the, one, the one that is, um, you know, leading in the market is AWS, which is a product of Amazon. Uh, web service. It's called Amazon Web Service. So it's a product of Amazon, which is a company, I think, based in the US. Um, and they are very, very um, good in in providing web cloud solutions, especially, especially cloud solution. Um, I may also want to talk about WP Engine and we look at some of those. 
Um, but also out there, I also know some of the ones that, and these ones are, are um, you know, um, companies that you may want even just to Google even uh, right now or any other time. Um, I know, for example, AWS is keen, even in this season, they are providing free courses on cloud computing, free courses that you can take. Um, the same way Huawei is doing the same, just trying to build capacity around Africa for people who are keen on the services that they provide just to be able to cover the market. Um, so AWS, um, other hosting solutions I know out there is HostGeta. Um, I know of um, Site5. Site5 is they pride themselves in, in um, providing hosting for um, serious web designers. That's what they say, yeah. So they are hosting providers for serious web designers. And I have used one of their packages there. It, it's quite um, quite nice because you can have one package that you can host more than even 100 web applications within just one package. And it's fairly good. If I was to even just uh, open um, their site, you can be able to see that very easily, uh, what I'm talking about. Let me share this screen and you see what I'm talking about. Um, stop this, share this. Um, so this is a site five and we will maybe look at it in details um, at some point. Yeah, they have a package of 13.95, which is around 1,000, let's say 14, hundred in a month for unlimited unlimited c panels what that means is as long as the space you've been provided allows you can host more as many as many applications as you want so if you are um, um you know a starter that who is trying to probably pick um or just a startup that is trying to start developing applications for clients this is a place that you can run to buy a package or partner with a friend buy a package and you can host as many applications as possible in there um yeah so in a, in a year they would that would cost you around twenty thousand or so twenty five thousand thereabout um and you can host as many applications in there as possible and um, there are many other i can talk of name chip for example um name chip. there are many other but i i can't exhaust the ones that are out there in the market um but i know as we continue i will even be like for example this site i will be showing you what they have on the back end and maybe demonstrate a way that you can be able to set up a domain in um in their uh, i mean in this platform or in this hosting provider um but also i will try and check out some of those that exist also in our kenyan market yes um oh sorry um i wanted to stop sharing this and uh Or is that please and start sharing this? I hope you can be able to see my screen again. Um, the notes you can see that. Someone confirm you see? Okay, okay. Um, so the other thing is uh, hyperlinks, which are selectable elements, um, domain name system, but also we talk of domain name server, which helps us to host the domains. And domains is basically something like, you know, it's the name that we are able to connect to a 
given IP address that points to the web server where we are hosting a web application. So a domain would be, for example, www.ztech.ac.ke. That is a domain, and that points us to a particular web, um, um, a particular, um, um, a particular IP address, which also now points us to a given hosting space within the web server. Um, if you have any question, please feel free to raise it up on the chat box anytime, and I will be checking that as we continue. Um, email, I think I should have talked about domain, and let me just give you an example. Um, so if I talk of, let me take an example of a Kenyan um, solution or a Kenyan solution provider. Um, and I'll take an, ex an example of uh, what we call um, Truehost. Truehost is a new, fairly new, fairly new um, solution provider who is also, they are priding themselves on just giving efficiency with a lot of, um, with a pocket friend friendly um, packages. And um, when you talk about domain, which is something I would also want to illustrate, is that you can be able to buy a given domain for, and domain is just basically a URL that you can use to point to a given uh, server that exists. So if I talked of, for example, dero.co.ke and typed, this will search for is there anyone else using such a url in the world the whole world yeah so if there isn't then i'll be told congratulations uh, the, the the domain is available and i can buy it uh, right now i think a dot co dot ke is going for this amount um 499 per year for the first year and then the, the renewal cost is 1200 and so you can be able to buy that. Um, I'll show you more on this as we do some more practicals in the course of this class. But yes, you can buy a domain. Um, you can secure that domain. So put an H, um, um, what we call a secure socket layer level on that domain. If you are hosting with them, you can use their name servers. And these are the names, these name servers are the ones that helps us to identify the uh, the web um, or the hosting server where we are hosting our uh, our files. If you are hosting in a different location, for example, I can say I know the name servers for site five, so I can say I will use this name servers, and definitely that domain will point to the name servers for site five, if I do something like that. And so the, the, the domain will be uh, bought from Kenya, but all the files will be hosted in the US where site five is located. And it's possible, of course, to be able to do that. Um, yeah, those are some of the things that I am looking forward for us to engage here and just learn a few things here and there. Um, but yes, in case uh, you feel like uh, that, that I'm moving a bit faster, don't worry. We will look at this from a practical perspective and in much more details. I am so excited because some of the classes are facilitated before. I have not had stable internet in the, in the laboratories. And so some of the practical sessions that I really desire that we should do, we have missed doing them just because of unstable connection and, and, and also demonstration becomes quite hard. So I'm very excited that this season we can be able to demonstrate very many hands-on skills. So I would really advise you to make sure that um, one, you focus, you put the best foot forward, focus, be here, um, you know, wake up. I am keen to wake up, uh, you know, um, prepare myself, get some energizers, um, take a shower, 
dress sit down yeah not in a in a in a coach or something on a chair on a table sit down and focus be here so that you are able to gain as more as you can but also take a notebook and be with it there so that you can take some points um you know check some of those examples that we are giving what are they providing that's how we learn that's how we learn um yes the other thing of course we we talk about email uh, file transfer protocol which allows us to transfer virtually any kind of file within the internet and also the world wide web i think i will move on um now uh we may want to also think how web works and uh, i will move to just basically to show you um to show you um i think this one i had used for another lecture let me just change this to to ZTEC so that it drives us home <laughs> uh or it sounds like we are home uh but um what i was saying is um as we think about how web works let's think about for example a domain like ztech.ac.ke which helps us to you know to access the ztech file or rather the, the ztech web application or the ztech website and so such a domain um helps us to or it's just the name that we are using to be able or to rather point us to a given IP address. And so when you type that domain, uh, you know, we are able to search that given IP address that is associated with the domain. You have done networking, so you know how we can be able to translate from a domain, I mean, from an IP address to even what we call a binary yeah, form of an IP address. So all that happens um and so you are able to access um a ztech website here yeah, for example and and that's basically what what exactly happens so the url helps us to have a better um, uh understanding of or rather an easier way to access uh the platform as opposed to uh you know using the you uh the url um or rather not url but using the um using the ip address because if i told you for example and i can give you that example here if i told you that for you to access the um the the um oh i should have shared my screen let me show you sorry i thought i'm sharing my screen but let me share again um, Let me share my screen. Um, so we are saying this. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm saying that uh, whenever we we have a domain name like ztech.ac.ke then we are able to use that domain to point us to a given IP address that represents a, or rather a, a, an IP address is what we use to access a particular location, um, a storage location of a given web server. And so when we type that, we are able, one, remember we, are, we also store the domains within the domain name server and so we are able to associate a given domain uh, with a given ip address within the domain name server and then translate that or that helps us now to root or to be able to get where is this address pointing us to it's pointing us to this particular web server and so we can be able to access the files that are located in that given web server. Now, when we access those files, we would expect definitely that whatever we access or the files that we access 
uh, we will be pointed that the given IP address will directly point us to um, to the home page by default. It will point us to the home page by default. And that's why uh, pretty much, I think the statistics say more than 60% of those who um, uh, access the web applications, they access that through the front door, which is, um, which is, um, which, which is the, the home page, okay? Which is the home page. So that's basically how web works, and you can read some content uh, that I'll provide on this slide um, uh, or, or on this presentation. There are some of the skills that you may need to be, or that you may need to um, engage and learn. Uh, I know some of us here are desiring to be front-end developers, um, so UI stroke UX user experience stroke user interface design is a key thing to you. I know some of you are desiring to be backend developers. Um, so the issues to do with database, the issues to do with encryptions, uh, the issues to do with um, socket layer programming, um, those are issues that are of interest to you. Um, but I also understand that probably we may, some of us may be interested to be, um, you know, a full stack developer. So you can develop back end, front, back, front, and everything. Um, and so you may need all round skills. And so um, I, I know and I want to admit that we can't be able to cover everything here because there is a lot around web uh, development. But I think my desire is to ignite you to see the possibilities of what you can be able to achieve. Um, yeah, in in just becoming a full stack developer, or rather, but in just uh, trying to gain skills of both the front and back end development. And so, some of those skills are the ones that are here. I usually tell students, and that's where I start with my students. Um, using either frameworks. So if you are keen on framework, Django framework, or any other, uh, that would be a good place to start. The other thing is using um, using what we call um, content management system. So any content management system, this can be Magento, it can be um, Drupal, it can be um, uh, WordPress, any one of those uh, content management systems uh, play a key role when you are starting or when you are beginning to learn web development because they are able to give you already developed platforms or um, structures that can make your work easier. And so the learning journey becomes a bit um, easier. And so even in this class, I will be very keen on using some of those frameworks um, particularly, I will use content management system to just be able to demonstrate a couple of possibilities that we can be able to achieve um, at the end of the day. I believe that in just one lecture, we can even come up with a whole, um, a whole website within one lecture, and we'll try to simulate that in this class. And so I would really recommend if you are learning Django framework or you are learning a particular framework, that is a good place to be. That is a good place to start. If you would want to start learning um, uh, a content management system, may it be Drupal, may it be WordPress, um, Joomla, any one of them, that is a very good place to start because it helps you to see the possibility and so you are ignited into how can you learn more and more. And that's very important. Um, in case you have any question, please uh, keep um, them coming. Let me confirm that I'm not alone. I know I can be here alone. Um, Makanga, please type in if you are here. Uh, weekly, type in if you are here. Ana Moero, type in. Just say yes. Uh, Huntington, Kipto, are you here? Grace, are you here?
Okay. Um, Nakanga, are you here? Are you here, Makanga? Um, okay, Angela Mwende, I can see you. Um, so let's just continue, but I would want to confirm if, um, uh, Makanga is here. I would want to confirm that just to be sure that uh, I'm not working with, I'm not talking to screen savers. You know, it's possible to talk to screen savers on the other end and people left. Uh, they logged in and left and left screen savers there for you. Um, yeah, that's the, the well, that's what happens with these technologies. Guidelines to web scripting. Um, very key guidelines, but also I will couple this with the second lecture, which is on principles of information architecture. Um, uh, yes, and basic guidelines, writing concisely, for example, making your work scannable, scannable um, putting things, um, important things first, details last, using language that everyone can understand, and maybe let me, and building credibility with meaningful links. Let me just give a bit of understanding about this, but I have explained in this lecture, moving on, and so you will be able to see what I have posted um, or what I have provided there. But writing concisely means that um, you can let your let go of words without losing the meaning, and that's very important because in web application, it's not just in web scripting, it's not just putting all the information there, but it's just about communication. Are you able to communicate effectively? Um, in communication, we usually say of propositions. I learned that back in the days when I was doing undergraduates, very many years, eh? um, time flies, um, growing old. Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I did um, a course in communication that was talking about propositions in communication. And I still remember some of those propositions. One was um, communication is what is said and not it's it's what is heard and not what is said yeah communication is what is heard and not what is said. so i can actually be communicating to you guys here but all that you are hearing is um, you know, my my mother tongue in traditions yeah so i come from uh you know a community where uh, you know N and you know N and any other um, you know letter there they don't move together yeah um, so I will have some uh, you know pronunciations that are really a challenge here and there and I'm okay with it I don't feel insecure at all but uh, you can be here and all that you're hearing is just how I am shrubbing and shrubbing uh, as I speak and um, you miss hearing anything else, yeah? And so communication is what is heard and not what is said. And another proposition is uh, meaning is personal and internal. That I, 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 it is at your discretion to determine the meaning you deduce from what I communicate to you. The meaning you make out of what I communicate to you. It is at your discretion. I can't be able to dictate that because the meaning that you deduce is actually, you know, um, informed by a lot of things. It can be informed by your worldview, how you have been raised, where you've been raised, the communities you've been raised in. That can even in and itself just inform um, the meaning that you deduce out of what I say. And so communication at its core, it's very tricky. Now it becomes even much more tricky when we talk about online uh, online platforms. And the reason why I'm saying this is because um, in online platforms, then we have a bigger audience. 
we have a global audience. We are not just communicating to our target audience. So for example, ZTEC will be communicating to students and their parents and guardians. But we are ZTEC is not just communicating to students and their, and, and, and their parents and guardians, but they are also communicating in a global perspective. Because there is someone in China who will just Google and they will get ZTEC University and they will check. And you need to ensure that even those that uh, are, are, you know, checking your online platform all over the world can still be able to get that. So writing concisely is a big thing. And um, I'll throw in some few uh, thoughts around, um, uh, around um, information architecture in a few. Uh, making your, 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 your writing scannable. Now, the typical behavior of anyone browsing on the internet, I know you guys are keen on social media, the generation we have, it's very keen on social media. And sometimes you get into Instagram, you don't even think about the pictures that you are double tabbing, yeah? It's just double tab as you move, double tab as, and we are in a culture where people desire that they don't have to read more. They just want visual, audio, and they are able to get the information. And we have to factor in those facts um, as we design and develop applications. It's important to put the, fact, the important things first when you are developing. So for example, the front door, which is the index page or the home page, make sure that it's um, snapshots of all the details that anyone would want to know regarding your web application. Um, and then all the, all the other details, put them in another page. So that if someone sees, okay, you're talking about bachelor, bachelor's degree, I think I am interested, I want to know more, then you can redirect them to another page where they can see more information. Um, use language that everyone can understand don't use jargons don't use a uh, very complex language yeah? um, so use language that everyone can understand build credibility with meaningful links and th this what it means is ensure that as you communicate to people or as you communicate to the audience that you are targeting um, for example if you are redirecting them to another page the link, the name of the link they are using should in a way tell them what they expect on the other page they are going to access. And that's very important as well. Um, yes, um, characteristics, I will touch this very shortly because there is something I want to introduce uh, before we uh, end. And so I may actually um, take some, 10 minutes after 9.35, because um, I had scheduled this for one hour. So I will extend with 10 minutes after 9.35 for us to end. Um, but on characteristics, remember, this is what I would want you to remember as we think about characteristics of a good web project. One is responsiveness, design, um, you know, portability, maintain, but even as we talk about those characteristics, we need to remember the end goal. What are we having as the end goal in mind? And the end goal here would be, for example, maximizing the throughput. And the throughput is, uh, who can tell us what throughput is, by the way? Um, so that I don't be the one spoiling everything here. Um, Brian, don't know, what is throughput? Um, any thoughts? Um, so Brian uh, is typing. Anyone else, if you know what throughput is? Um, in operating systems, I believe you must have covered response time. Yeah. And, and also I would want, um, so response time, um, Milka, what do you think response time is? Bandwidth, bandwidth, uh, I will talk to Onesmas Mutunga. Uh, what do you think bandwidth is? Uh, share with us your thoughts there. 
but I must say that the max, you know, the goal is maximize throughput, minimize response time, um, you know, increase the visibility. So achieve the highest level of visibility um, and also increase the uptime. So many hosting solutions that you will encounter, sorry, they will tell you of 99.99 um, uptime. We guarantee you 99.99 uptime uh, for your application. So uh, Brian, you're saying that uh, throughput, it provides as much utility as possible with the minimum time possible to achieve it. Um, uh -huh. um, almost there, but I don't know what you mean by utility. I would be interested to know what exactly you mean, but almost there. Um, time taken to retrieve a certain um, object on the web, uh, that's much closer, Milka. Um, thank you. So re, uh, throughput, uh, okay, response time. Milka, you're talking about uh, response time, which is true. Um, so throughput, I would put it as um, the, the number of requests that we are able to service in a given unit of time. So if we are sending requests into the web server, how many requests can we be able to service? in a given unit of time. That is what I would call throughput. Um, response time, of course, is the time taken for a request to be sent and the first response to be received. That time is what we call a uh, response time. High visibility and uh, uptime going hand in hand. Um, uh, this I would call them, um, I would call uh, that just making sure by all means that that application is up. Because, for example, if the server that is hosting this platform goes down right now, we are down. Yeah, we are all down. And so um, uh, the rate of requests um, passing through a system that could be closer to what a throughput is, Throughput refers to the rate at which data is transferred through a system, okay? So it's basically the rate, and in this case, the rate means just the number of requests that we are able to service in a given unit of time. The website's bandwidth is the measurement of the amount of data a website uses during specific time, correct, okay? So how much, um, you know, um, just how much data are we able to process? How much data are we able to transfer within a given unit of time? Um, so the speed at which you are transferring that data is uh, is basically what we would uh, refer to as the bandwidth. Um, so the amount of material passing through a process, okay. Um, yeah, so basically this, this goal, uh, is very important so that whatever you are looking at as characteristics, then you are tying them with the end goal you have in mind. And that is what we are sharing right here. Um, so uh, the characteristics here, I would want to categorize them into three. That is characteristics that helps us to, um, to improve the usability, others that help help us to achieve functionality, better functionality, but also relevance. So if you think about this, it would be more of a uh, context, content, and of course, um, I don't know if I, I have that. I think I'll show you in the next slide. Um, but it's about what content, how relevant is the content? So what is the context that we are dealing with? And are we providing better usability for the context where we are um, working in. But also, of course, what are the functionalities that um, we need for us to achieve better, to achieve relevance and um, usability. So responsive web design, for example, is one of the characteristics. And here we are talking of 
um, just uh, you know applications that can be able to scale up and down um, depending on the devices that we are using to view them. Um, a good example would be this. This is an application looking at this on a desktop. Then this is how it would look like. So look at this. Um, we have this for the desktop application. So, so this one you're using for, uh, let's say, a desktop computer. Yeah? But when you go to a tablet, it looks like this. So it's scaling down to the level of how the screen looks like or the size of the screen. If you go to a mobile uh, phone, it scales down further. And there is no any missing functionalities that you are missing. And that is what responsive design would help us. Um, reliability, maintainability, these are things I would want you to look at. Portability, um, security is very key. So we'll talk about some of those on how to enforce security within um, a web application. Just a few of them. We may not look at everything, um, but just sample a few that are um, maybe a place for us to begin. Um, close uh, cross compatibility is also very important because we are not able to dictate uh, you know, the platforms uh, that are going to be used by the users when they are accessing our web solutions. And so we need uh, compatibility to be achieved. Scalability, uh, we need to ensure that whatever content we have within our web application is just a percentage of what we expect in the future. And when we are designing, we need to ensure that um, our designing, um, you know, the, the way we design applications is in a way that we can scale up. Scale up in terms of optimization of the application to fetch more results, to, you know, to fetch more uh, data and to serve more responses um, in, uh, in a way that we can scale up the, the bandwidth but also the database where we are storing the, the data in case that happens. And I have seen this with um, digital ocean platforms. They are, um, their platform is very keen on allowing you to scale up anytime. It's just at a click of a button. They have, a, I think, a package they call droplets. And you can always be able to scale up quite easily without necessarily having to um you know to bring down your application if it's the database you want to scale up you just pay and once you pay uh just um picks up and you are able to scale that up quite easily so scalability in terms of how well are we able to optimize the application scalability in terms of the bandwidth but also scalability in terms of the database those are very very key um Makanga, I have looked for you for long. I see you are here now. Okay. Um, so this process is something that I will, will simulate, so I will not go into that. So there is a web development process, which is decide the purpose, plan, design, gather the content, and then build tests, upload and we say we want to upload if we are developing from a local server so if we have a local host um, then we may want to upload those, those files into our web server but if you are uh, uh, designing or developing um, online so using a web server hosting on a web server you don't have to upload and then also maintenance then uh, there is also the, the, the stages of redesigning a web application, and those are there. And um, types of applications that we can have. These ones I would want you to just go through them and get to see. Yes, and that must be the end. Um, uh, so before we end this, I would want to just look at um, um, some few principles in the next lecture because i don't want to um to uh, next next class i want me i want i want us to focus more on practical sessions uh so let me just go through information architecture um now
And uh, the reason why I'm coupling these two lectures is also because um, we've talked about characteristics and some of those are achieved through how well we are able to design um, information, how well we are able to structure our information. This is quite a long one. Um, so I will just introduce and then go to principles and the rest I'll leave us to just look at, at, at that. And so it's just basically on designing a wayfinding system. Information architecture is basically focusing on designing a wayfinding system for the application that you are developing. So a way that someone can be able to navigate through. They can be able to know where they are, what is there, and where else they can be able to go. And those are the questions we'd want to, uh, to answer to anyone who is visiting our web solution. Where am I? Yeah. What is here? And where else can I be able to go? Um, so because, and, and the reason here is also because the, the relationship between the words and the meaning is very tricky. And th those are some of the things I was just trying to, um, to bring out when we were talking about, um, um, or when we were looking at, um, the characteristics or the the web uh, web writing skills or guidelines to web scripting rather um yeah we it's i don't know if you agree with my statements here that information architecture attempts to solve the challenges inherent in language and representation um for example a statement like no document fully and accurately represent the intended meaning of its author what do you think? What do you take of such a statement? I don't know what comes to your mind. Um, happiness. Are you there? If you are there, um, do you think that statement is true? That no document fully and accurately represents the intended meaning of its author? Okay. Um, if I talk of who, um, who is here, mm, who have I not mentioned today? Um, Lois, Lois is here. You came late for class. Lois, no two readers experience or understand a particular document or definition or label in quite the same way. Do you think that statement is true? And if it's true, uh, happiness, like you're saying, why do you think it's true? Yeah, why do you think it's true? So, Lois, if you think that by saying no two readers experience or understand a particular document or definition or label in quite the same way, um uh why are you saying it's true if it's true or if it's false then you tell us lois are you there okay so um so you can tell us but what what i'm trying to as the type what i'm trying to um to bring out here is for us to see that Sincerely, the relationship between words and meaning is usually tricky. That, I don't know, we come from Kenya, and uh, I know you guys know there are two language, two tribes here in Kenya, where one tribe, and I don't want, I'm not tri tri tribalistic here, it's just, uh, you know, appreciating culture. There is tribes here in Kenya where one tribe, the name given to, um a man is the same name is used to represent or to to call a woman in another tribe yeah and so you may go to this tribe and say this name and you are referring to a man but they are they are wondering what are you talking about that's a woman yeah and so the relationship between words and meaning are always tricky they are always tricky. And so there is a need. And when you say no two readers experience or understand you know, a particular document in quite the same way, we are saying that if I read a document, I deduce my own meaning. 
if you read the same document, you deduce your own meaning. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the, that that right there is very tricky. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. With, I, I agree with you, Innocent, that the difference, the big difference here is the perceptions, which are uh, around our worldviews. And sometimes our worldviews are very different. It may be just our cultural inclinations. It may be our religion, our religion um, inclinations, um, you know, the faith, the belief systems that we have formed when we were growing up. All those can influence a lot about how we interpret information that comes to us and that's why we are saying this is a tricky one and so even how we represent information then we have to be very careful yeah we have to be very careful so i would want uh, i'll give you this assignment but I, I it's there on the discussion forum but i just wanted to go through so just remember that um the dilemma we have is just to be able to resolve a lot of propositions. One of them is, for example, what ZTEC does. ZTEC is very, very keen on TV commercials. Yeah, they keep on advertising uh, on on TV, and they spend a lot of money, quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, quite a lot of millions right there. And so you can imagine if you 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 do all those advertisements, and then you are referring people to the website and they go to that website they either they either miss the information they were looking for or they go there and find the website is down and you have represented yourself like we are the who is who we are the best and then they go and find that the application they were supposed to get more information about you is actually not working that can be very costly yeah so there are all those cost and value propositions that we may want to look at uh, and there is always a dilemma, uh, but the dilemma can only be answered through information architecture, which is what we are talking about. This is something I talked about in, in the other lecture, about the users, the context, and the content. You remember, um, you know, the issue of functionality, the usability and the relevance. Um, all that is also answered on how we design the designs that we are talking about. Um, so I wanted to just go straight to the last part in a few minutes, which is this principles of architecture, principle of object. I want you to read through this, um, and I, I will be guiding this discussion in the discussion forum. So our today's discussion is going to be based on uh, on two questions, let me try and see if I can bring this up. Um, because uh, our discussion is going to be based on two main questions. And uh, one of the question is, um, okay, let me get there and share the screen. Then you will be able to see what I'm talking about. Um, Okay, um, let me share this screen. Um, so this, uh, the discussion forum is going to form the last part of our today's lecture. Um, and so I am going to release you from this place just in a few minutes. Um, So I don't know if this is visible from your end, but uh, it's there in the dashboard. But basically what I desire is that in today's discussion forum, we'll be looking at an existing e-commerce web application and attempting to answer the following question. So just try in your machine or wherever you are to log in to jumia.co.ke and um help me to understand or post on the discussion forum 
on how has the company been able to achieve the various characteristics. So you can pick any two characteristics and with evidence, tell me how do you think that Jumia has been able to achieve responsive web design, for example, as a characteristic of good web application? But also, um, how has the company been able to achieve the various principles of information architecture, which I have just shared on the slide, the, inf the information architecture slide that I, uh, I have there? So these are two questions I would want you to answer. But also, to be able to answer this also, a good way to look at it is also um, this, these questions. Let me show you this. Um, sorry. Um, so I'm talking of this. These questions, where are they? Uh, these ones, yeah? In Jumia, these are questions that can point you into how well the design has been done. Yeah, so where am I? What am I am looking? I know what I'm looking for. How can I search for it? How do I get around the site? What is important and unique about the organization? What is available in this site? What is happening there? Yeah, what is? what are the processes in there? do you want my opinion about the site how can i provide feedback yeah how can i contact someone what is the physical address maybe for jumia this may not be a key one but um those could be questions that you can relate to now i have changed the way i mark attendance so i will be marking the attendance from the discussion forum so once you post your two posts, I will be able to see your posted and I'll pick your name there and be able to mark the attendance from there. If you don't post, then I may not know that you actually attended. And I, I, I just felt it's important for us to engage so that it's not a monologue. Mm, yes, I know you are here and I can tra trace that, but I also need to be sure that you have gone with us through to the very end because you can log in here and i see your name and then you leave and i am not able to tell that you have been here throughout so i would want you to transition to the discussion forum um post your two answers and then respond to at least three more students on their answers and give them constructive feedback what constructive feedback means is um, help them to think about what they have posted. So you can tell them, oh, okay, I see you talking about responsive web design. Um, I saw this and this in this site. Could you be interested to check that out? Um, or I see you are talking about this. How about if we look at it in this direction or in this manner? So constructive feedback, and that is what I really, really desire us to provide. Let me know if there is any question before I can uh, dismiss us to get into the discussion forum. So I can leave here and join the other side and see what you guys are posting as I mark the attendance. Any question, you can either unmute yourself and speak or you can type in any question. Thank you, Lois, for typing in uh, your answer to the question I asked. I saw that. Any question? So let me wait for the questions. But um, in the meantime, if you want to... Uh, 
Uh, Innocent is saying he'll be back in 30 minutes in the discussion forum. Um, yes, I will allow this till the end of today's lecture. So I can close it by the end of today's lecture, which is at 11, no problem. Um, Wilson, I'm waiting for your concerns. Would you please share the two questions? Um, the two questions are on the discussion forum. If you go to the dashboard of this course, um, on this platform we are using, the dashboard of this course, you'll be able to see the two questions on lecture three discussion forum. They are already posted there. In case you have any challenge around them, um, you can let me know and I will be able to help. But basically what I'm talking about, um, um, it doesn't harm for me to post here. This is what I am talking about. Those are the questions I'm talking about. Um, just to answer your question. Uh, any other question? Any other question? Okay, if no question, then uh, allow me to mute uh, myself here and to go off the video. And then um, I will be waiting for your post. Very, very key is to post something relevant. I want as relevant as possible and to give evidence of what you're saying. Uh, give an evidence of what you're saying. So if you're saying, a principle of growth you have identified that jumia has been able to achieve the principle of growth give some facts on why do you think that that is uh, that has been achieved if you are talking of the principle um let's say the principle of choice the principle of disclosure the principle of exemplars yeah, the principle of front door, which is actually very important. Um, just help me understand why do you think that has been achieved or how has it been achieved? So pick those principles that are in the lecture. I hope you can be able to access the information architecture lecture. I had posted it as well. Please check it. Um, uh, it should be there. Let me confirm. Yes, it's actually there on lecture three. So just check it out. Yes, it's there. Check it out and um, use read through the principles, understand them, and then post. So even if you take some time, no problem. Uh, provided you post by the end of this lecture, I will be able to follow through. And I will be here for any assistance, of course, that you need. Thank you guys for your time. Um, yes, I'm loving this. It's working, it's it's perfect. Um, I feel like life should be this way. We can learn online and we don't have to have a lot of hassles um, of beating the jam in the morning. This is working for me perfectly well. I don't know about you. You can give your feedback. Do you feel like you're learning? Uh, please let me know so that it's um, so that we can help one another if we are facing any challenges. If you have any challenge, please let me know. It's important for us to address some of those challenges. Yes, I agree with you guys. It's working. It's perfect. I am actually looking forward to, wow, I am looking forward to some very exciting practical sessions with you guys here. You better, uh, you know, brace yourself for some amazing stuff uh, together in the coming lectures. I, I know we will be able to achieve some few things uh, by the end of the semester.